Hi there, and welcome to another episode of the Praying Christian Women podcast. I'm Jamie Hampton, and I get to be here again with Sherry Swalwell, who is here joining us to talk about her blessing journal and just to give us some details about what she considers to be just a really amazing and important part of her relationship with God and her prayer life. So Sherry, thank you so much for being here again with us to, to talk with us one more time. Oh, I'm so excited. Thank you for having me. Well, our just for fun question today, since we used up our prayer closet question the last time is what is the most unusual thing that you've thanked God for? Okay, so I just had a birthday, and on my birthday, we had a hailstorm, so I'm thinking that the most unusual thing I'm praying for or thanking him for is hail, because as a result, we're having a, or we're getting a new roof, so. <laughs> nice. So did you yeah, need one and, anyway, and it just kind of, like, put it over the edge? <laughs> well, we would have had to think about it within the next five years, so yes, this is, and, and the people who come out to tell us to, to do the estimates keep telling us, they're like, this is a once in a lifetime occurrence. I'm like, yeah, we had the polar vortex. Now we had hail. Now we get a new roof. <laughs> That's right. Well, thank God for that. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Well, let's just jump right in. Um, you, you talked in our last interview about, you touched on, so first of all, for those listening, if you have not listened to our interview with Sherry talking about her book, Hope During Heartache and her experiences, you might want to go back for a little bit of background on what led Sherry to begin this Blessings Journal, but just give kind of a, a synopsis just to remind us about what inspired you to begin a Blessings Journal. So in 2006, we got pregnant and we experienced a miscarriage within the first trimester, the very end of it. Um, and then in February of 2007, my husband got sick. And so we kind of went from our ideal life and things were going great to everything crashing around me. And as Jamie and I had talked about in that podcast, you don't usually see how bad you are as well as the loved ones around you. So I had many, many people recommending to me, well, you should do a blessings journal. You should do a gratitude journal. You should do this. You should do that. And like I told Jamie, I said to their face, I was very polite and said, thank you. And in my head, I said, yeah, never. So that was 2007. And finally, finally, I was wise and listened. And I started one in 2013. And I would highly recommend going sooner rather than later because, uh, yeah, it was, it has been probably one of the greatest things in my prayer life and in my quiet time with God. I can't imagine doing life without it now. So, so how did it start? You, you've told me aside that, that it has changed over time. So how did it start? How did it begin? What did it look like when you began this journal? Well, when people recommended it, I really didn't know what they meant. And so I would, if, if it was me, which it is me today, so I tell people, or I would tell people, just start simple. So I started with just a little notebook, and I like to, there was my first one, and I like to pick, like, colors. To me, it has to speak that year. It has to speak me. So each one, and I have a few other ones that I'll show you in a little bit, they're all very different. So each year for me was very different, but just start small. So I started with just literally writing down every day, one or two blessings that God gave me for the day. Sometimes the blessing was a free cup of coffee from a friend. Sometimes the blessing was a book that came in the mail or enough work to cover the bills or Honestly, a lot of days were, thank you, God, that today is over. Wow. That was it. Like, that was how bad the day was. That was all I could say thank you for. Mm -hmm. But it's that, it's that lifestyle and that rhythm of getting into just looking for the different blessings in life that God gives. And I, over time for me, I think I love the little blessings even more than the big blessings. Like, he blows us away sometimes but I love the little things that he gives like the sunrise in the morning or the chance to sit and have coffee with my husband for five minutes before he goes to work or that hug from the friend that you just needed that 
she, you didn't have to tell them, you know, just little things like that, I think are so important. So that's what I started with for probably the first two or three years. That was it. And then I started branching out more because I'm the type of person that once I get something, then I just want, I want more. Like when I start to feel God's presence, I want more of God. When I start to hear God's voice, I want more of God. I'm kind of selfish that way, which I think he wants us to be. So it's a good kind um, of selfish. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> so I, around the same time I had started asking God for a word of the year. So I started adding that into my blessings journal. So the beginning I would, and, and actually I like to buy ones that have sections. So like this was mine from 2017 and it has pockets and it has sections, dividers. And so I use that because the very first section that has all of my words of the year, the verses that God gives me for the year, um, the I fast regularly. And so I will put that in there. I'll put the dates of when I'm fasting, what I'm fasting, what I'm praying for when I fast. Um, so all of those kind of personal things in the very beginning. And then I have the blessing section where I just list out kind of like a diary, you know, this is what happened today. These are my blessings for the day. Then I have, um, things where God has spoken to me, whether he's either spoken to me through dreams, whether he's spoken to me during prayer with my prayer partner, um, different things like that. And that's in another section. So it has just evolved for me over the years. And the closer I get to him and the more he reveals himself to me, the more I put in here. And I have a really great example. I blog regularly as part of my writing. And last week I was blogging and I wanted to share about something that God had spoken to me. And I'm very, I'm very particular. If God speaks it, then I'm going to write it exactly as God spoke it. I'm not going to paraphrase. I'm not going to pretend that I remember. I want it to be exactly what he said because he's God. So um, I couldn't remember the exact words. And I'm like, I can't publish this without going back and checking. So I literally sat on the floor in my bedroom and I went through my prayer journals and I couldn't remember if it was a year ago or two years ago. So mm -hmm. I actually ended up getting to bless myself double because I had to go through two, two years worth. And I just sat there and the, the encouragement that I got from the ways that God has answered prayer and the ways that God has shown up and has been faithful in our life. I relived it again and I was it like totally changed my spirit like I wasn't in a bad mood to begin with but I was like full of hope and full of praise and full of God really does have this like I, I was excited again about what he's doing in our lives and the the promises that he's given us as a family so that is like one of the biggest blessings of a blessings journal is being able to go back and look and see where God has has taken you where you started where he's taken you and and getting to hope for the future again so i have to show you the blessing journal for i i usually am a very plain person i like plain things but this last year the two words that god gave me for my year were delight and victory so this year i decided i had to bling up my blessings journal so i have victory on the front nice i have delight on the back and my daughter is actually the one who decorated it for me. Oh, uh, this is the first funny. one that I spent like $20 on. Normally I'm like $6 or less, but I was like, God said victory and delight. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna prove that, that I believe his promises and I'm going to remind myself of that every day. So my whole family's kind of into it now too. Like they know mom's journals and they know this and they know don't touch those because those are hers. They're private. They're between her and God. And I, I, it has truly changed my life. That is really neat. Well, and one of the questions I was going to ask is, is writing it down important? Is there a difference from just praying prayers of gratitude? Because I can imagine people are thinking, well, yeah, I mean, gratitude is good, and I, but I can just sit there and, and speak out the things that I'm grateful for, or, you know, as I'm lying down at night, I can, you know, relive the, the things I'm thankful for. But it sounds like writing it down is a really important part of it for you. 
It is. I wouldn't remember half of what God has spoken over our family if I didn't have it in black and white. And in fact, as I was praying for this podcast before I came on today, God spoke more. And it's, um, I like to do it double. I, I've always been, so I threw it on a piece of paper and I threw it into my prayer journal so that I can rewrite it later when I have time to reflect and think. Mm -hmm. I like to do it double because then it gets it in my head a little bit better. I always did my exams that way in school and I figure God's way important than more important than a test. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, that is, uh, yeah, I love that, that you, because I think there is a little bit, it's kind of scary writing in a journal when it's something important, especially one that looks as nice as yours. It's like, <laughs> you know, okay, am I going to get this right? Am I going to mess up? So in addition to just reinforcing, which is way more important, but you have an opportunity to write it down neatly and not make mistakes. <laughs> and it's funny you say that, but that is true. Like every year in January, when I restart it, um, I'm like, I don't want to write the first word because I'm going to mess it up. It's yeah, hard it's not going to be journal. perfect. Yeah, it is. It is. And a lot of times I will put things from my previous years into the, the present year to remember, like the, the Bible verses, they're a running list now, but my words oh, nice. for the year, they're a running list now. So I don't just put 2019's word. I put, I think I started my words in 2012. So I put from 2012 through 2019 and I see how God had to give me the first word to learn that before mm -hmm. he could give me the next and the next and the next. When you, when you write it out and when you keep that running tab and that running tally, you can see the big picture so much better than if you just focus on today or this month or this year. That's why I loved that idea of sections where mm -hmm. you can, because you can have things that are just kind of like visual ready reference, Bible verses, words, and things that are going to be constant that you're going to want to look at every day. And right. so do you write in it every day or is it just when you feel moved to read, to write or uh, how, how often do you write in your journal? That changes with my seasons too. When I mm -hmm. first started, I was religious with doing it every day. And I think God had that happen to give me the habit, like to get mm -hmm. into the habit of doing it to to get the reward of what happens when you do it regularly. And then as the seasons have gone, <clears throat> instead of writing a little bit every day, I'll write chunks every so often. So like I probably write in it at least once a week, but more than that more often or mm -hmm. more than likely. But um, I will write like seven or eight pages when I sit down and write, because it's just the way that my season is going at this point. But I, it honestly, it's like my reward at the, so my, my days are very, very busy during the week and my weekends are like my, well, God wakes me up in the middle of the night too. And he does it sometimes during the week, but mainly on the weekends because he also then knows I can sleep in. <laughs> right. I am not up at four 30 in the morning. I can sleep in a little bit longer. So he'll wake <laughs> me up at like two and having three children and having a busy household, that's like my, that's like a big giant blanket for me. I sit in our, in my prayer chair and I pull out my Bible and whatever devotional I'm working on that day. And I pull out my blessings journal and I just kind of surround myself with it. And then that's my time to just think and just write and just reflect and just remember all the good things. And it's funny because um, I remember one instance where God literally gave our family a miracle. And I told him when, when he had given us the opportunity that we could choose choice A or choice B, choice B would be the miracle. Choice A would be just getting back, restoring what was lost. I chose choice B. He gave us the miracle. And I told him, I said, I, I will, you know, tell the entire world what you've done. You get all the glory for this. And two days later, I sat down and I was writing out in my journal and God said, you did what you said you would. You told everybody and gave me the glory, but there's so much more to it that I had given you that you haven't even seen yet. And it was by sitting down and getting quiet and reflecting in my blessings journal that he showed me not just the huge, like I had talked about there's big blessings and little blessings. 
I had, I had acknowledged the big blessings. I had seen the big blessings, but then he showed me all the little blessings that were the details that I just hadn't seen. And I love that. I think that's why I love the little, the little blessings so much because they're just, they're, they're like a big warm cup of coffee. Like they're just the icing on the cake. Absolutely. And you know, when you were talking about, um, that God sometimes will speak to you in your dreams or give you interpretations of dreams. Do you keep it on your bedside and wake up and immediately write them down? Or is that the two o'clock in the morning or what, how does that work? <laughs> well, God and I came to an agreement or let's just say <laughs> I, I gave him a suggestion and it seems to work. <laughs> so I told him, I said, I promise you because I dream a lot and there's many, many dreams that I have and that, um, he's like, nope, there's nothing here. And I'm like, are you sure? Cause it was really vivid. And he's like, yeah, no, there was nothing there. That was just a dream. But so I told him, I said, God, I said, anytime I wake up and I still remember the dream vividly, I will go and I will write it down immediately. And so there will be times when I'll be dreaming and I'm like, oh, this is a really vivid dream. You know how you can kind of talk to yourself when you're dreaming yes, a little bit. Right. And I'm like, oh, this one's really vivid, but then I'll wake up and it's gone. And I'll be like, okay, the old me would have worried about it all day long. Oh no, I disobeyed God. I didn't write it down. He wanted to tell me something. Now I'm just like, nope, God and I talked about it. That one was just a dream. We're okay. He's and then if I do it. remember it vividly, then I write it down. And then um, sometimes it's a, it's a something and sometimes it isn't, but I'm being obedient to what he and I talked about. <laughs> One thing that I love that you said, and I think it's important to note for someone thinking about beginning their own journal or someone that has a journal and they want to get back into it, is that it's like your reward. Journaling shouldn't be a chore. Agreed. I, I think that it shouldn't, if you're out there and, and journaling isn't your thing, I mean, there are lots of benefits to it. And if you feel like God's leading you to start one, obviously start simple. And, but I, I just think definitely for no one to come away from this thinking, oh, if I'm not doing it just like Sherry, if I'm not writing eight pages or whatever, then I'm not doing it right because it shouldn't be a chore. It's your blessing. It's what you look forward to. And, you know, everyone's life, prayer life looks different. Everyone's journaling life is different. And, you know, I definitely believe there's a place for discipline. I mean, I do not like to get up in the mornings and when I have to, I have to. And when I do, and then I spend time with God, I never regret it. And so there is an element of discipline. You might need to wake up a little earlier, or maybe you need to, you know, shift things around so you have 20 minutes at lunchtime, or however it's going to work for you. But, um, but yeah, definitely, if it becomes a chore, then something's wrong. And, you know, not to feel guilty if it doesn't look exactly like, like yours or like someone else's. Um, and maybe even to pray that God would give you ideas of how it would, how a blessing journal could, or any kind of journal could really be incorporated into your life. And yeah. I love how you said that, Jamie, because in the very beginning, it was a discipline. Like I didn't, in, it wasn't a reward at the beginning. At the mm -hmm. beginning, it was a matter of obedience. It was, okay, I feel like God is telling me I need to do this. I have no idea what this looks like. So I'm just going to start here. And then when the relationship got built and when I got deeper, when I started to experience him deeper and get that trust with him and, and just have that extra level, that extra layer, that's when it became the reward. But I completely agree. I don't expect anybody's to look like mine. Like this is just the way that God has morphed me. And I think it's exciting that, that we're all so different and so unique and that everybody's will look according to, to their relationship with God. Like some people put praises and prayers. I don't do that. Like I feel guilty that I don't do that because I'm like, I should write down all my prayer requests. I should write down every time he answers a prayer and I just don't do that. But that's not, that's not where I'm at yet. Maybe someday, like maybe that will be my 2022 um, section, but for right now in 2019, I don't. So yeah, I love how you said that, that, that there's a discipline element to it. Kind of like with running, like when they, people say when they start running, they hate it, right. but then they get to a part where they love it. So 
I would just encourage people to do the discipline part at first and see if you love it. And if not, then say, God, I was obedient. I tried. Do you have something different for me instead? Like, do you want me to, to take this discipline that I've done and transform it into something else? Like maybe writing songs. I don't know. Poetry. Some people are really good at that kind of thing. So. Oh, I love that. I just, I love that whole, how you explained all of that, because that is so perfect that in the beginning, do make sure that you make the effort and, and do the discipline portion. But I think of John Piper in Desiring God, where he talks about Christian hedonism, where, you know, God designed us to enjoy and to enjoy him. And so, you know, you kind of expressed it as selfishly, you know, wanting more of God. And that's exactly what he talks about is this Christian hedonism where we are not meant to be slaves to God. We are to delight in him and to be fulfilled. And so I think like what you're saying with, and it applies both to journaling and running is when you start to experience the benefits and the uh the feeling of putting that time in it makes you want more of it and god exactly. reveals himself and you you're like wow this time god revealed these things to me and i got to see these come to pass and you know my just and even going back and reading old journals to just be able to have that renewed sense of of thankfulness um but yeah you said that really well so anyway um that was great. So can you tell us before we hop off, can you tell us about your Spoken from the Heart devotional series? Because you do have this entire series of Spoken from the Heart devotionals. Can you just tell us a little bit about those? Sure. They started out as blogs and they started out as just me um, from the perspective of a Christ following wife and mother, um, just how I see life and how um, God just reveals things to me through sometimes the littlest thing. So like we planted apple trees and God gave me the comparison of apple trees with children, raising apple trees and raising children. So different things like that. Um, but I had, they're, they're broken down into different sections. So there's, there's a group of them that are standalone that you can just um, read any of them in any order. They don't really, um, they, I mean, they all tie back to God. They all tie back to life and parenting and marriage and being a woman and things like that, but they don't have a major theme. And then I also have a freedom series where God um, healed me from depression and um, anxiety and different fears in my life. Um, then there's a um, journey where God has taken our family on this journey. Um, so there's an adventure series. There's a parenting series, which trust me, I am not telling you how to parent, I'm coming alongside you, encouraging and supporting as one parent to another who does not get it right every day. <laughs> so there's, um, but if you go out to my website, they're listed um, in rows and each row is a different, either a different series or the very bottom row that has the most is just the standalone books. And then at the very, very bottom, I have a Bible study and then um, a book that has shared stories about miscarriage, uh, which is the Hope During Heartache book that we talked about earlier, and then another one called Peace During the Pain, and that one is a compilation of 10 men and women who are sharing stories about cancer journeys. So, um, so yeah, so you can find them on my website, and they're just really short. There's what kind of what they look like. This one's one of the standalones. This is Blessed by His Love. Um, they're all nature pictures and they're just really short. There's 32, um, in each book. So you can do one a month and with a couple extra here or there. But, um, I always like to give people extra things. I don't like to just, you know, make it, make it 30, but, like a baker's um, dozen. yes, exactly. <laughs> and there's a couple books that have like even 35, but that's just because God said, give them even extra. <laughs> So I said, okay, but yeah, so they're just really short. You can um, read them alongside with your Bible it takes literally less than five minutes, but hopefully they're very encouraging and they just kind of give you some food for thought during the day. Oh, I love that. And just thank you so much for being here and sharing about your journal. And um, it makes me excited to be more intentional about regularly journaling. Cause I do, I love, I just, I just love 
being able to look back and seeing all of the things that God has done. So um, thank you, Sherry. Oh, and can you just remind our listeners of your website? Yes, it's just www.sherryswalwell.com and it's C-H-E-R-I-S-W-A-L-W-E-L-L. I should really seriously think about getting an easier website because my name is not always that easy to spell but um yep yeah, but that's it so you just go out there and you'll see my blog if you're interested and you'll see all the books that um i have available and i'd love for you to come visit and if also i forgot to say this part but if you sign up for my email newsletter you'll get a whole devotional not partial but a whole one 32 um, devotions called Choosing Grace. It's one of the reader's favorites. And so I thought, well, why not give away the best? So um, you can have that one for free. You can download it and see if you like my style and see if you're encouraged and stick around. That's wonderful. Thank you so much, Sherry. Thank you. I have had a lot of fun today. Me too. I'm going to close us in prayer. God, we just thank you again for Sherry and just the heart to serve that you've given her and blessed her with. We just pray your, your blessing on her and her ministry, on her family and her home. And um, we, just, we just pray that you would pour out your blessings on them, God. And we lift up our listeners today, and I just pray that you will speak to each one of them and, and just really direct them if, and, and lay on their heart if you have for them to begin journaling or to get back to journaling um, if they've kind of fallen away from it like I have. And um, Lord, we just pray that you'd be glorified in this time and that you'd bring us back together very soon. In Jesus' name, amen.